sit on daddy's lap and Jack's gonna sit okay. on, on his mommy's lap. Okay? And we'll see. I love you. Okay. <laughs> Can I try on the microphone? This is yeah. our microphone. Hey, Anna, you want to introduce our guest here? I love you more. I love you. I love you more than that. Uh, hey, right. dear listeners, well, our special like guest tonight is Ava. Hello. And Jack. And Hello, Jack. Ava. That's right. And Ava's daddy, Jeremy Brenner. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba. Hey, why don't you tell Daddy what you were just doing with Jack? Uh, we were playing cooking. Uh, do you know what? We have cooking class at school. You do? All right, you guys ready to go play again? Go go cook us a... Can you go cook us a, let's see, Beef Wellington? That's what I would like. I'm crazy, but you guys are serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally oh legit. Hi, bye, so sweet cute. children. Um, like mini Ted Bundys, these kids. <laughs> these sociopaths. They're way too smart. They're going to go up and uh, play. And, Jeremy, and how old is she? She's uh, three, and a, three and a half. Bye, guys. Love you. Hey, we'll see you guys, we'll see you guys upstairs. <laughs> no, we won't. No. Yeah, totally unsupervised at this point. <laughs> um, hey, everybody. So my uh, guest tonight is Jeremy Renner. Jeremy, thank you so much for being here. I know you're so fucking jet lagged. Yeah. And I'm really sorry because what a fucking pain in the ass this must well, be. Well, I look really good off camera <laughs> and in the dark. And what about this fancy, weird uh, dining room? You have you seen all the other animals in there? Like the I don't know. At some point, I'll on the just... wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Full creepiness, on. you know, the continues. Well, no, it's not. It's not even creepy. It's sort of like reassuring. We're, we're talking really? about those dudes that were between our fences, right? The oh, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, yes, yeah, it's the wrong. Yeah, that's true. That's the wrong fence line to be in. That's so. true. All right, let's just let listeners know that you two are neighbors, next door neighbors. That's right, we are. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you're, but yeah, it would I I I would feel sorry for I think the person who. That, who yes, what we're saying. Yeah, it's like not a yeah. When we got kids and a thing, it's like look, yeah. Man. Hey babe. Hey yeah. babe. Yep. I I like to tell my friends that you know if this shit goes down and like the zombies are real and whatnot, come on over. Come to my house. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we we yeah. Uh, we got a good setup here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> got some shovels. <laughs> I got a got full bar. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of canned food. That's right. I can tell monologue after monologue. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, a piano? Yeah. All right. Why nice. do you play? Yeah. Why don't I ever hear you play? I play every night. You do? Yeah. Oh man. Every night. And we also have another musician neighbor who plays. But maybe, maybe I'm going deaf. Yeah, maybe. You do have glitter on you. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's uh, the the price of being a, a single father with a little child. It looks like I've been in a strip club. I know. That's um, what I was telling you earlier. That any time that Chris has glitter on him, I'm like, what, you know. Yeah, you, you got been a little down to boy. The bo- body shop. Yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah. Have you noticed how a lot of like strip clubs they say like live nude? Uh, I would I wouldn't mind the alt the alternative of like dead nude like that would be uh i mean if you're into that sort of thing i am I'm, I'm into that sort jack of get thing. out of here don't listen to your mother <laughs> um okay so um jeremy uh oh you know what's interesting well there's lots of many interesting things about you but one of the things that i remember in one of our early conversations as we uh, are becoming as we become we became best friends which is what i'd like to call us now mm-hmm. um don't you agree with that <laughs> yeah i have a mouthful of food so. <laughs> um but uh that you told me something amazing that sometimes when you act you can kind of slow your heartbeat down do you remember telling me this yeah, that's really, well. Because I have yeah. a rabbit heart, and so does Sim. Sim yes. has like eight rabbit hearts. That's true. Pounding in him, um, but you can do that. Yeah. I, I I don't know. At some point, will you teach me? Well, it's much more about for me because my my heart is pretty much like you know black coal, and it kind of beats <laughs> once in a while, and then it takes on vacation. But it, what that's referring to is, um. Uh, kind of energy levels, right? Yeah. It's more, you catch me in the morning, you're just waking up, you're getting one version of me. But if I got up in the morning and ran around the block twice, you're going to get a very different thing. My heart rate's up and it's creating more energy. Right. And some characters um, require that that energy or that sort of BPM, if you will. Um, so it's, 
you know, physically, it's it, that's a, something I do use a lot. But then how do you, because I, I get easily intimidated, how do you, um, like when I'm in front of the camera and the camera's rolling, I get, you know, like, like gripped with a certain anxiety. And, and as I like get involved in the scene, I can calm myself down a bit. But I, um, I wish that I had that ability to, um, to kind of... Uh, complete, not only sort of completely ignore the camera, but also ignore the director. <laughs> yeah, I got pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just you know, for me, it's just I've always built a um, uh, a life on being fearless. And yeah, just, and also just not caring. And um, those, the combination of that just allows me to kind of do whatever, whenever, oh, at God whatever damn time. I envy you know? that. Yeah, but well, it's, it also you know requires to be egoless and um, kind of just let go of things. And yeah, that, that, it allows for a lot of fun, a lot of freedom. I do feel like with comedy, it's given me. Um, I really try to embrace the idea of of a lack of vanity with the characters, yeah. even if the characters themselves are vain. I attempt to uh, you know just make an ass out of myself as much as possible, um, and. Uh, I think I've succeeded to some degree. Yeah, and, con- and, con- and like written comedy too. It's like maybe you and I, how you and I grew up too. It's a, you know very different nowadays than it was back in the you know Brady Bunch and you know Good Times and all these kind of shows. A very sort of different scripted kind of thing. You know, like Michael J. Fox is like a genius at taking you know one written joke and making three out of it. I don't like for me. I couldn't do that, and because I'm much more of a uh, my own verbiage in the thing and I just couldn't deliver a line like uh, on a show and be like oh well, this is how it'll be funny I, I, that doesn't make it, any sense it makes it too technical to me it's like oh maybe kind of and then you have to do it two or three four times and it's maybe not quite as funny anymore and oh then, my god so you, I can never I would never you're gauge speaking about my life with mom I mean I love oh. doing it but it is it is like sometimes a line it feels like okay. I just have to jump into the deep end and own this line. And yeah, I yeah, set up, set up joke, set up, set up joke. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, sometimes I'm a t-ball stand. Oof. Um, yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. That's that's terrifying to me, actually. It's it it can be it yeah it is tough. And you're, when when you're rehearsing it all week, you're right. It sometimes it feels like oh man, this am I am I doing this right? And uh, yeah, it's. But but I also love the mechanics of doing a, a multicam. Like like there's something that's really you know kind of surgical and theatrical about it, and very much like technical being, too. Yeah, yeah yeah. People think like oh there must be lots of improv. No fuck no. There's no improv, and uh, and so that that requires sort of a different level of kind of dis- I mean, what am I talking about me I have Jeremy <laughs> Renner uh, okay but listen Jeremy we're gonna do something weird mm-hmm. okay um, I play a character named Karen Sarducci she's the CEO of Imaginarium Studios um, mm-hmm. and uh, and she's called you in for a general which you've generously agreed okay. uh, to, to go to you but I did send a car for you. <laughs> um, so I'm going to I'm going to pitch you a couple of movie ideas as Karen Sarducci. Okay. Are you ready? This yep. is my assistant Donovan. He'll lead you. Hi, I'm Donovan. Jeremy, I'm so happy you're here. Uh, Karen is really excited to see you. And are you ready to see her right now? Yeah. I'm, I'm would awesome. yeah, would yeah. you like anything to drink? Um. Yeah, no, I'm good actually. It's okay, good. right yeah. this way, yeah. Karen. I'd like you to meet Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. Hi, Karen. How are you? Oh, my God. What an honor and a thrill. Thank you so much for being here. You look thrilled. I am thrilled. (laughs) Um, I have had my eye on you for a long time. I just think you're absolutely brilliant. Mm. Uh, My children, um, Milo and Ventimiglia, we were just recently in Antwerp, and um, and they sort of have their finger on the pulse of Hollywood. Um, And they were saying how much they loved you. So we're, um, we're, we have the rights to a couple of movies that we're making some sequels to, and I'd love to sort of loose. We don't have the scripts, but I'd love to loosely pitch you um, and see what your interest level is. Let's keep it loose. All right. I yeah. know. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. I can see you don't have any shoes on. That's it's funny. not creepy at all. No, no, no. Yeah. I've got um, like a, a heel spur just like Donald ah, Trump. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. One yes. of those. Okay. Yeah. So what do you got? What's, what's... Um, well, now, the... The first movie I'd like to pitch 
to you um, is called The Blind Side 2. Mm. Field goal is good. Um, you would play a character named Scott, a blind 15-year-old foster kid. 15? Yes. Um, you've had a really hard life. And this wonderful Southern family takes you in. Um, they're able to look past your blindness and see your good heart. Um, Darby, who's the strong-willed mother of three, teaches you how to kick a field goal. Um, you go on, you're so good, you go on to state and win the championship for your team with a game-winning kick. Mm -hmm. um, and you go on to become the first blind college kicker. You get a scholarship. Although Darby wants you to finish school, high school, before you uh, accept your scholarship. So uh, we already have a deal with Celine Dion to play Darby. Um, and also we're thinking, I, and I would, I would love your thoughts on this. We have a deal with Jason Statham mm -hmm. in general. And so we were thinking he would be kind of the hard-ass coach who's sort of unwilling to accept a blind field goal kicker initially, but then he sees how good you are because he can see. Right, right. <laughs> now, how, how good is Celine Dion? Did you... Oh, she's fantastic. Yeah. She's, yep, she uh, she's, wow. uh, sells out all of her audience. I mean, she can sing. She can sing. She, she really can, can sing. Does she sing in this? Well, she, I, I, I was sort of thinking that not only would she sing sort of like a beautiful number, um, like, you know, I can kick a goal or whatever, like a, you know, whatever. Right. But she sings you through um, the field goal kicking. That's, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking out loud. Maybe you have an earbud uh, while you're kicking. Uh, the tension's high, and she sings to you. Um, and that's what helps you score. That, I mean, this is all loose. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it, is loose. it is loose. And I like scoring. Um, Maybe yeah. she teaches you how to drive later on when you turn 16. Yeah, I, th I think that might be, that might be a cool uh, B-plot. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you like it? Um, probably not my vibe, Mama. Not uh, my vibe. And please don't call me Mama. Again. Okay. I, I really, I, how about hot sauce? Uh, Ass nuts? Uh, you're, you're very funny. I didn't know you did comedy. Uh, no, I don't. I didn't do comedy. Yeah. Uh, it's well, you, it's you, you, you're pitching me any comedies? Uh, no. No? Okay. All right, so Blindside 2, we'll talk to your agent about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll think, uh, about, I'll think about that one. Field goal is good. Yeah. Um, I would think, you, I think you're perfect for it. Yeah, I mean, I feel can, like you know, I can play Can you 15. look at me as though you are blind? Yeah, I'm try, doing, I'm try doing, it right now. I'm doing, I am doing it right now. Okay, listen to my voice and pretend to look at me. Mm -hmm. It's sort of an audition. Okay, so you're not really looking at me at no, all. No, no. All right, but maybe you're imagining um, scoring the uh, the goal. All right, I like that. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, the second project we have the rights to is Hurt Locker 2, uh, Jefferson st High. Still hurting? Oh, no. I think still hurting might be a better title. Well, hear hear me out. I mean, we st we we own the rights to Hurt Locker now, um, so we would still like to capitalize on that. We could do Hurt Locker Two, still hurting Jefferson High. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So, um, the once again, this is Milo and Ventimiglia. They um, they can. I have to give them credit. They're brilliant. They conceived of this idea. Um, now you have been discharged from the army okay mm -hmm. you've become a substitute teacher makes sense um now for some reason because you are kind of let's say you're not a typical substitute teacher that just plays heads up seven up you actually make the kids work now the football team gets mad right they shove you in a locker um and uh, you have no way out. So uh, we figured that happens in the first uh, 12 minutes or so. Okay. And uh, the rest of the movie, you're in the locker. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if you have deemed... I'm not sure. Maybe it's a happy space. Maybe it's a... I don't know. Um I, I mean, you tell me what you, how you would like to see it well, end. Well, it sounds like it's a pretty cheap budget. <laughs> well, uh... What is the know, budget of this movie? Donovan, shut the fuck Sorry. up. Sorry. Yeah. Um, well, we, we would like it to be a festival 
films, so somewhere, let's say, between 18 to 25. Sense. Of course, you, well, you would, you would be getting, I mean, we're paying for your talent. Uh, your agent loves mm. this idea, by the way. Oh, does uh, he? Yeah. yeah. How many, do you, do you make a lot of movies, do you? Oh. Karen, I'm, I don't see movies. I don't. Do you see all these posters? Uh, I've mm. done all of these. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, and I, and truthfully, Jeremy, I want to be the person who gets you that big old gold. I want to get you eight big old gold statues. Oh, wow. wow, no one's ever said that to me yeah, before. Well, I, I, I want that for you. Yeah, well, thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. So, How long have you guys worked together, by the way? 18 uh, years. Wow. She hasn't promoted me yet. Wow. Shut the fuck up. How old are you? Do you know why I haven't promoted him? I don't know. Because he keeps fucking interrupting. Ah. Uh. He's supposed to answer the fucking phone. Sorry. Um. Anyway, so Hurt Locker 2, Still Hurting Jefferson High, and The Blind Side 2, Field Goal is good. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking yeah. to your agent. Yeah. Uh, we're working out the yeah, deals. That's, that's pretty good. Thank you so much I, for coming yeah, in. Thanks for, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Do you need validation? He, I've um, got him a car. I'm, oh, I'm, that's right. I'm pretty validated. Uh, Jimmy, what a pleasure. I can't wait to tell Milo and Vince Amelia that you came in. Thanks, Mama. <laughs> what was that, balls? Ass nuts. Ass nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I like a little ass nut. That provides such an interesting visual. Yes. Nuts, balls, yeah. if you're, if you're big, coming out of your ass. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Huh. If only I, I wish I had ass nuts. That would really make me unique. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay, now we're going to move on to, um, now you're done with poor Karen. Creepy Karen. Creepy Karen. <laughs> Karen Sarducci. She just, she doesn't know what to do. Um, okay. I, def I definitely know somebody like her. You do? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we've, I don't know. You might be, that's where we might have gotten it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say her damn name. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so now oh i kind of i feel like i want to do i'm gonna do deal breaker number two you want to do that first yeah and then i may and then i may go on to um tosh but yeah yeah okay. let's do it okay how do you proceed uh should i just do the second yeah, one then do the do this do the you know what the, do the first one okay you're about to shoot a movie starring meryl streep Okay. Called Mother May I. Yeah. The script is already getting early Oscar buzz. Before you begin shooting, Meryl invites you to her home in Ojai to bond over lunch. You arrive and enjoy great conversation and a lovely meal of black truffle risotto that Meryl has personally prepared for you. Fantastic. Um, at the end of the lunch, she um, she says, as I'm getting to know you, uh, Jeremy... I really like you, but I'm I'm just not quite sure you're right for the project. Uh, when you were in the bathroom, I call. I just want to be upfront. I called my agent and we recast you with Casey Affleck. But um, I know that you're attached to the project and passionate about it. Um, so I would love it if you're still on board, and I want you as my personal makeup artist. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I know you're amazing. I I love a lymphatic massage every morning. Um, can I can I count you in? Uh, you're out of your mind, woman. You out of your mind. That's what you would say to Meryl Streep. Yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> you out of your mind. I actually was a makeup artist for eight years. Yeah. I know. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, man. It's like you know. You're not. You're not going to be there at five in the morning for her. No, man. No, no. Fine. I'm, fuck yeah, you. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy about it. Fuck She's awesome. Fuck you, <laughs> Mr. Renner. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to invite me back over. You're crazy about me. Uh, okay. So let's wait. Do we have? we have two? Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. You great. have the, You have, you have yeah. two. Two sets. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Now. How do you proceed? Uh. Yeah. Exactly. Um. All right, so here's the thing. You have to imagine that you don't have, like, a personal driver, that your car's in the shop, and so is your bike or whatever. For whatever reason, you have to take an Uber pool mm -hmm. to a last-minute meeting 
with Steven Spielberg mm-hmm. at Shutters. Okay. Which is all the way to Santa beach. Monica. Yeah. Like a Friday at four o'clock. Right. Do you know about Uber Pool? I've I've heard of it, yes, I'm aware of it. Okay. So Let's pretend that this is just your last option. You're in a okay. car with a bunch of randos. You're going to first. You're the first pra- passenger. Oh wow! Yeah, that's oh. that's gonna okay. Not okay. gonna go so well. Okay, <laughs> so um, now your driver picks you up. Um, what was your name again? Tosh. No, no, no. Your name. Oh, my name. Yeah, you're the Uber pool driver. I didn't. No, you told me I wasn't going to be the Uber. Well, right. No, no, no. You you can't read the thing, but you're still our driver. Okay, you can name me. Whatever. Hazmat. 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 Okay. Hazmat. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> um, I think I may have had an Uber driver named Hazmat. <laughs> <laughs> or my eyesight is going to shit. <laughs> like, what? Isn't a white Hyundai? <laughs> Hazmat? <laughs> I should probably call him first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you um, you Hazmat has to make a quick stop in West Hollywood to pick up um, Oh, it looks like I'm picking up Tosh right now If you don't mind, I'm picking up Tosh right now Sure, sure, great um, Tosh gets into the back seat with you Okay, so there's a little um, thing we'll do here Okay Hey, Hazmat, right? Yes. Hi, are you, are you Tosh? Yeah, I'm going to Colorado in 2020. Do you want to sit in the front or do you want to sit in the I back with sit, this gentleman? I'll sit in the back. Okay. Wait, wait you're going you. where? Colorado in 20th. Oh, Colorado in 20th. Oh, this yeah. is, I think you're going to Colorado on the 20th. My God. <laughs> How much time have we got here? Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> no, yeah. It's a, it's a, do you want to sit in the back? It's on the way, yeah. Yeah, I want to sit in the back. Yeah, it's on the way. Thanks, yeah. Let's do it. I just feel safer. Um, hey, I'm Tosh. How you doing? Good. Okay, this is weird, but um, has anyone ever told you you look like Jeremy Renner? I hear that pretty much every day in my life. You do? Yeah, it's it's just one of those things. That's yeah, weird. I hear it. Are, yeah. are you? I hear it every day in my life. That's crazy. That's so crazy. What are you doing? Are you going to? Are you going to Santa Monica too? Um, yeah, in that general direction. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to an audition. Oh, nice. Do you like um, living in L.A.? No, I despise it. Oh. There are things that I really like about it. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I really like that... Um, I really like that there's kind of a sense of spirituality here that I haven't really found anywhere else. Um, hey, Hazmat, can you take uh, get off Santa Monica and just go sunset all the way out? Uh, no, it looks like sunset is completely blocked, so we're going to be stuck in this traffic for a while. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate Thanks, bud. Um, oh, my God. This I'm is sorry. So what, weird. I'm, I'm sorry. What happened? Oh, no. This is so weird. I have this, like, top secret audition, and I have to study my lines. All right. Um, All right. I hope you okay. studied. This is weird. But is there any chance you could help me? Oh uh, well, I don't, I don't know anything about. Could you just say, um, okay, I'm, because okay, it's t- top secret. I don't really know what it's about, but I just would love, like maybe, um, I don't know. I'd love maybe uh, some advice. Okay. Um, even if you're not Jeremy Renner, I still feel like you seem like a cool person. You want me just to read this with you? Yeah, yeah. I'll be Janet, and you could be. Clay, okay? Okay. Okay, you saw at the top it says interior Clay's bungalow. Right. Janet enters. That's me. Uh Uh-huh. I don't know what else it says, but I think it says something cool. An ethereal brunette with luscious breasts. Oh, yeah, I guess. (laughs) That's why I'm sort of boring this top. Um, Okay. Listen, pal, I'd love to have you out. Uh... You don't have to fucking do that no more, Janet. I quit therapy. So I said, give me back what is mine, bitch, or go back to Boise. Oh, yeah, Janet? Thanks for the information, bitch. You call me, tell me to bring my kids, and you are chilling with drifters, Clay. I'm not playing ball with this fucked up vibe here, Janet. You fucking think it's my fault? Okay, I think there's not a question mark though. Ah, uh, well, look, I, you know, I don't do this for a living, so. Oh, okay. So, so you, so you, you, you fucking think it's my fault? 
My fault? That's how I would read it. My fault. Can we do it again? Yeah, okay. Good. Wait, this is something you're Do you think you I remember? should do more passion or what? Like, should I have more, um, like, like I've been abused or? I, I think you should just learn, learn the lines. Okay. It would be probably the easiest thing. There's three of them. Okay. So if you learn the lines, you might have a better shot. At yeah, but a couple of them kind of have more something. than one sentence. Or at least commas. Right. So maybe, you know. Okay. Do you have a good memory? Yeah. Are you sure Sunset is really... Has sorry, not, sorry. Is, We're going to be here for a while. <clears throat> okay. Listen, pal. Wait, you know what? Maybe I should do it more lusty. Well, let's, let's try that. Okay. Listen, pal. I'd love to have you out. You don't have to fucking do that no more, Janet. I quit therapy. So I said, give me back what is mine, bitch, or go back to Boise. Oh yeah, Janet? Thanks for the information, bitch. You call me, tell me to bring my kids, and you are chilling with drifters, Clay. I'm not playing ball with this fucked up vibe here, Janet. You fucking think it's my fault. I just didn't do the question. That was really good. Yeah, better, right? I got chills. That was so good. So, so look, yeah, it's kind of kind of three's company sort of vibe. Is I it? think it's. I just think you're really good. Uh, I'm just reading this this awful stuff. Oh my god! It's no, terrifying. no, no! It's not. It's like top. I think I'm it's... getting car sick from looking oh, down. Oh, looks like your stop is coming up, Jeremy. Uh, I'm mean, yeah. Oh my god, you are. What? Oh. I knew it! 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 You were Jeremy Banner. <laughs> oh my god, I knew that's why you were so good. <laughs> you scoundrel! Oh my god, can I ask a huge favor? <laughs> you, you is there any way selfie? I could contact you? <laughs> you want a selfie? No, I don't do that. But is there any? I just, I just feel like is there any way I could contact you? Yeah, sure. Um, like your number, I mean, smoke signals work best for me. I don't have a cell phone. Oh, yeah. Shit. Yeah. Oh well, how's Matt? How's Matt? Good. Yeah, I can, I can get you you up. his info. Yeah. Oh, really? And what yeah. agent, like, who's your agent? Uh, yeah, at CAA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just call them and say... That yeah, just call and ask for me there. You can totally get a hold of me. Okay, cool. Totally. Oh, my God. Yeah. I feel like you saved me. If I get this role, I am totally crediting you. Well, I think you should get it because you're bodacious and luscious. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good luck to you. Oh, my God. Good luck to you, too. I need it. I hope you get the role, whatever yeah. you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You have glitter on your face. Yeah, I know. Were you at a strip club? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Jeremy. We'll see, we'll see you later. <laughs> can, I, can I get your phone number so I can block you and then delete you? <laughs> do you want to do a five minute break and we'll do the yeah. calls? Yeah, great. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Before we do the call, I've yeah. got, I've got, Whatever I've got you a couple do. things. Are we recording? We are. Okay. Uh, I want. I just want to describe the scene upstairs, which is um, uh, Jeremy's daughter Ava and my son Jack climbing all over uh, my husband Chris Pratt. Mm -hmm. They're watching Frozen, and uh, and ja and like Chris is being attacked by pillows. Uh, attacked, <laughs> full on attack. And my son Jack sniffed. Uh, I don't know why he sniffed my husband's butt, and he said it Wait. doesn't. It doesn't smell so bad. Yeah. <laughs> why, what was the context? Why did he sniff his it, butt? You know. He's a little four-year-old boy. He wants to sniff butts. And, then, and then he said, did you ask him if it smelled bad? Or he, no, he, he just it said, up? Daddy, your butt doesn't smell so bad. Aw. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. Yeah. Does he it's go adorable. around like smelling butts? <laughs> but I yeah. think that that's yeah. a dude. I don't know. Chris likes... <laughs> <laughs> this is oh, it's right, all right. past. Here no, but comes. Chris, because B Chris likes, um, like because he likes to hunt and he likes to, um, he, you know, he he likes nature and stuff. He likes he he told me like as a kid he used to eat soil, so maybe it all maybe that's there's a, a very, whole genetic component that's to a, all of this. Definitely a very boy thing. Did you eat soil? Yeah. No, no. I met actually uh, some fraternal twins um, yeah, on the beach, and uh, I met the girl first uh i talked to the parents and 
Um, and she's like, hi, my name's Daphne and the thing, and I built this sandcastle, and I built this moat around this sandcastle to ensure that the, 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 the talking, 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 all about the... And the, the boy the, was like, I And like then you look over the boy, like, I'm like, where's your brother? And he's over there with his shovel eating sand. <laughs> <laughs> and that just really shows the, <clears throat> how, it was a great example of how, uh, what I've always believed is like, you know, because women develop so much faster and are so much smarter uh, uh, with emotional intelligence and in- intellect, especially at a young age. And uh, boys are just dumb as shit until they're about maybe 40. Um, but girls kind of kind of pull together pretty quick, pretty fast. That's why I was so it's, stoked. Because you know what? It's, good. it's like out of necessity, I think. At least I had an older brother. So for me, it was like, man, if I don't, I'm going to get like, I'm going to get a, a little. In the best of ways, my, my brother was, we're incredibly close. But my brother was hard on me. And I'm, and I'm glad and he made me feel like I had to prove myself. Like I had to climb the tree. Like I had to. Anyway, hey Jeremy, before we do callers, can I ask you two kind kind of in depth questions really quickly, and you can answer them as fast as as quickly or as not quickly as you would like. Sure. Number one is um, th- like n- thoughts on fame. Ah, uh, like, yeah. How, I, I know it's sort of a biggie. Yeah, you know, I've I've I've, I've actually just spoke about it m- more recently. Um, because it's always kind of shifted over the years, you know, and in travels you kind of learn a little bit more um, about that, it's how global it's kind of become. Before it's just like people kind of recognize you, and it's one thing, and now it's a whole other thing. <clears throat> but um, to me, it's it's a, a double-edged sword, and it's something that I never uh, ultimately wanted or asked for. I was just a guy that knew human behavior, and then now a lot of people like me for understanding human behavior, um, and you know, I've always been a, a private guy, and um, I, but I'm an honest person, and it's always just try to be as, as, as kind as I can to to people. But you know, um, you know, there's, there's there's times where it's inappropriate to ask for a selfie at the urinal. 100 percent of the time, I go pee in public. And there's someone that wants a selfie, and Damn, it's no, I didn't, it's no I didn't joke. Think it, about that. And it's like you know, um, people don't think. I'm like, look, I've, I have yeah. my, you know, dick in my hand. Maybe it's not the yeah. most appropriate time. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 it's for my son. Well, yeah, well, that makes it even creepier, bud, right? right? So right. just put the phone away and then let us move on. And, right. you know, wash your hands and maybe I'll shake your hand outside the, the bathroom. Um, but, yeah, fame is like, you know, a strange thing. It's like when it, it doesn't serve people in general. But because it happened to me at such a later stage in my life, I was able to kind of cope with anything that kind of came my way. Um, whether it be meeting a celebrity or um, just being recognized. Um, but, you know, I was, I was like 38, and it, it wasn't 18 or, t- or 25 or something. Do you think you would have been a different person if you had changed game earlier? Absolutely. I mean, I, mean, I think that it, it kind of shows a track record of, like, those that kept, capture a, a lot of fame, especially a lot of fame very quickly um, at a young age. It's, 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 it takes a lot of fortitude. And a lot of a lot of strength and a lot of uh, awareness and consciousness about yourself to be able to deal with uh, those kind of scenarios um, and that sort of responsibility, if you will, if there, if there is one with with being you know famous. So, you know, I think that you, you've seen a lot of a lot of uh, experiences in history and, and where you know people got famous very young and. And now, what are they doing? You know, that's usually, you know, oh my God, is that guy not wearing pants and he's he's on cocaine? Who, who, the, who knows what he's doing, right? So, um, you got to have a great support system. You got to have a really good sense of self, um, especially if you're young. Um, but then you then you can find the good things that come with it. You could, there's really wonderful things that can come with fame. Um, but the last thing, if I can if I can sacrifice something in my life, it's like here, go take it. I don't want nothing to do with it. I'd rather be the random guy in Target and go shop and buy toilet paper and do well, all the things like I've done all my life. It's just a little more difficult to do it now. Yeah, and 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 Chris and I talk about this a lot. Like there are there are like the there's like some superficial wonderful things that happen with fame. Like people give you a lot of compliments <laughs> right? and right. you, you know, sometimes you get a nice table or whatever. And sometimes you get free shit that you totally do not deserve. Right. Right. But, uh, but ultimately for Chris and I, we love 
we tr- we just truly love acting and it will be always be a part of our life and and i think you know um you know i have a fantasy of building an amphitheater in and uh making my neighbors come like watch a stupid production and <laughs> or jack be sit down and watch mommy and by daddy by the way jeremy <laughs> how would you feel i wrote a play that's right uh, i want you to star in it <laughs> it's about a blind field goal kicker there you go <laughs> Celine Dion's in i'm in okay again um so okay Okay, that was that was my first question before we talked to the, uh, my my second question before we uh, call um, Kelsey is um, your three favorite roles that you've played. Uh, yeah, you know I'm not I'm not a favorite in anything. Um, I think it's pretty. You don't good. like to rank things. No, I think it's it's uh, impossible. About, it's what impossible. It's like picking lovers. Your, <laughs> yeah, it, it, like anything. Pick a favorite color. How do you do that? Well, I like blue skies and blue eyes, but I don't like my food blue. Or well, about well, blueberries, uh, yeah. God damn it! Yeah, but you know what I mean. It's it's hard. It's it's very limiting, and I'm I don't think in things of terms of of, of labeling and, and confining something. Um, but there are things that, like you know, if if it's a song, you know, what song have I listened to most in life? You know, what songs? Or if it's a movie, like what movies have I seen more times than others? Like fifty times or more, and I can list those. Like the well, okay, roles well, that I've played. But what about a role that that made you? That made you grow. I can think of. I can. I can answer it in these terms. In things that affected my life, and that there were opportunities that came that I, I was sort of waiting for, uh, and that re- were huge milestones for me uh, as a as an artist. And I mean, and there's many of those. It's not just like three because the, the role. It was just sort of like the experience, like my first job ever on camera. Like I wasn't an under five. I wasn't an extra. I wasn't a. Um, you know, guest star on something. It was a lead of a, of a, of a Lampoon movie. And that was my first job ever on camera. So that was like a huge sort of like, ooh, I have that to change. Is, that's I, crazy. I, I had to change my, um, my goals. Uh, I had three very specific goals that I wanted to achieve when I first moved to L.A. in 93, 92, 93. And that movie achieved all those goals in the first year and a half. I'm like, okay, now what? Not to recalibrate and... Did that movie give you a jump start at all? Did it help? Not, re- not really. It just, it, you know, probably gave me confidence, I suppose, yeah. in, in some ways. And, um, it, you know, it's nice to get a little encouragement along the way as a struggling actor for, for so many years after mm-hmm. that. You know, it gave me, like, I, at least I'm, I'm doing something. I'm, so I'm would you say Dahmer was like the first Dahmer movie? was like the first one where, like, I was not doing that comedy stuff anymore. I really was digging deep into me as a human that really kind of transferred into what I wanted to do as an actor, which is much deeper, darker, uh, more interesting sort of roles. And Dahmer came around and, the, again, shot that movie in two, and a half week, two weeks Damn. and wow. for $250,000. But the opportunity to go play that role and do it in, in a certain way, um, I don't know, it, it, it changed. Uh, it's where that was a huge milestone because you know, I was the lead of a movie and the lead of a movie that was weighted there was a lot of weight to that and um it relied solely on me and that again power empowered me as an artist to know that i could sort of carry a little tiny movie and that's fine but then also a lot of good things kind of came out of that and was recognized and then especially recognized within the industry and then that allowed me to give me other opportunities and then it was you know working quite a bit after that and then hurt locker was another giant huge Mm -hmm. milestone where now same sort of opportunity to do a really interesting character as a lead role because I was again doing supporting roles throughout that yeah. time for the most part on, on larger films and then now this is a, a film that kind of took off and then obviously did uh, got the recognition and did all the things that it did and was so grateful for that and then the town kind of came after that and oh. so oh, you know it's it's those kind of things and like people think like you're an action star well gosh did People no, don't realize yeah, that there's a lot of other yeah, things. People yeah. don't look, you know, people have a limited perception, um, always. And um, my job is to uh, always look at other people's perception. Um, so I get it. But, yeah, th- those those are like big milestones that kind of happened for me in my life, I think. Well, I don't want to make you blush, and you probably won't blush because mm. I don't think you're a blusher. But <laughs> Not really. Um, you're really fucking brilliant. No, that doesn't and I And... And uh, the, the the way you embody a, a role is is truly really inspiring, and 
I wish I could do that. The closest I've come is Shelly in the house, Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> you were great in that, though. Oh, that come awesome. on. You did not I see love it. That. Of course I did. Oh, bless your yeah. heart. Yeah. I haven't seen movies in a while. It might have been one of the last ones I've seen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, God bless you. Well, that's like one of the last ones I did. <laughs> On repeat. Uh, <laughs> but no, but really, it's you, you are, you're just so fucking brilliant. And, uh, well, and thank I'm you. so I, glad I you're that. here. I appreciate that. It's, um, um, you know, it's not sexy, but it's, uh, or flashy. No, it is. I just, is. I just enjoy my job. The, the, I'm blessed to do it. It's um, it's it's scary and intimidating how you you embody your role. And anyway. probably why I'm single. <laughs> 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 Ooh, I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna call. Uh, we're gonna call Kelsey. We're gonna call Kelsey. Kelsey. Kelsey's in Philly, mm -hmm. and she's thirty-one years old. Okay, what are we gonna call Kelsey for? Um, Just to say yeah. hi. Well, She's no, she needs some help. Ah. she needs some help. She needs some advice. Okay. Yeah. And she's where? Philly. Philly. Hello. Hey, Kelsey. It's Sim. Anna is here, and Anna's going to introduce our special guest here. Hi, Kelsey. Hi. Hi. So tonight we have Jeremy Renner. Oh my goodness. Hi, Kelsey. How are you? I am well. How are you? Um, well, I don't believe you. <laughs> You're well. <laughs> I am doing well, yeah. Okay. You're sweet to stay up late. Yeah, thank you for staying up late. So, Kelsey, no so Kelsey, you need advice on how to survive the holidays with your mother-in-law, ah. who, in your words, yes. effing hates you. So give us a little she bit of background. Fucking, yeah, she fucking hates me. Oh, no. Um, my husband and I have been together for 11 years, married for five. And I guess going into it, he had told me, from the get-go that he is the least favorite child so regardless of where things went with us I was going to be the least favorite girlfriend daughter-in-law whatever it turned to be so um, things really got really tense when it came time for our wedding uh, with wedding planning I am not one to back down on things that I feel very adamantly about especially when it's my wedding day and it's such a stupid topic but she wanted to have all kids at the wedding and I didn't think it was appropriate because growing up that's not what we did so that was a big sticking point with her and at one point she said she wasn't even going to come to our wedding oh god. because of it oh god um things just got progressively worse from there um, my, I have a daughter from a previous relationship she's 13 and she's known Tony her whole life Tony and I, I mean, he's been around her since she was one and a half. So she's been around longer than most of the grandkids that are actually his nieces and nephews. So my mother-in-law redoes her living room. And this is, you know, maybe two years ago, she redoes her living room and she's showing it off to everybody. And we walk in and we see it and she has this quote unquote wall of grandchildren and she has pictures of all of the grandkids except for my daughter yeah. which Tony I he has made it abundantly clear that she is essentially his daughter and another sticking point with her is also we're not having kids so she also doesn't see the point of why did we get married if I'm not going to produce more grandkids mm -hmm. which is also my fault and I manipulated her son and brainwashed him into thinking he hates children now. <laughs> All right. So wait, so how many how many siblings does your husband have? He is one of five. He has a sister and three brothers. And what's the birth order? Is he in the, on the younger? He's the baby. He's the baby. He's the youngest. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um oh golly. All right. So oh, Where's boy. your family? Oh, my family is around and my family is totally normal and thought that I was exaggerating until the day that they all met her at my bridal shower and realized just how miserable this woman is. So, okay. so, so for the holidays, you, you, you got to spend it with, with uh, his side of the family? Yeah. 
We yeah. go back and forth. This it, year, it's our turn with his family. Well, even so, if you did both, you still got to go over there just obviously because of all right. the kids and the thing. and right? So, right. Well, what we do is we do have a separate day where we do have a children's gift exchange just because there's so yeah. many. Of course. Yeah, I do the so same thing we, in my family. I, yeah. It does yeah, great. there's so many kids. We have to plan a separate day besides Christmas or Christmas Eve because right. this one's going to this one. So, yeah. Okay. Do you have to stay at the house? Is it like far away? Do you have to like sleep at their house or something? No, or? no, it's it's pretty close. It's not right. anywhere that we would need to stay overnight. Oh, okay. But, but wait, okay. So I, I'm going to explore a little bit more about your husband's relationship with his mom. So is okay. he uh, like? I know that he's probably bothered that that you two, you know, have have a lot of strain. But does he have a lot of personal strain as well with his mom? That's separate from you. No, he is actually pretty apathetic about this whole situation. Wow. Okay, so that means here's the horrible, horrible, hard, awful, awful, awful advice that I'm about to give you. <laughs> Lay it on me. Are you sure? It's going to be fucked up and you're going to fucking hate it. No, see, I've already decided whatever you guys tell me to do, really? Karen Seducci involves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to apologize Karen's for what she's about worst. to say, and I have no idea what she's... <laughs> no, here, here's, here's, here's my advice, Kelsey, is that uh, you internally decide that you are going to give your husband the gift of Christmas by being unbelievably patient and restrained, and no late-night complaining about the mother-in-law, like, not, like absolutely bite your tongue and be... Like, like, do as much as you can. Find the strength to kill her with kindness, and give and, and view it as giving your husband a gift, and see what happens. Because really, what's the worst that could happen if if she's still a bitch, and and you've tried, if, and you honestly can say to yourself, you know what, this holiday season, I really. Gave up my all. I tried. I was as generous as I could possibly be um, as a gift to my husband, not out of like like anything else, just like tongue biting and cooperation and compliments. Um, and uh, I, I, I would view it as a grand experiment. And Tell me what this does, Anna. I think that then what happens is the mother-in-law has a private conversation with her son and says, oh, my God, Kelsey was just so lovely. Like, you know, and and, and also it relieves pressure on her husband. Like, um, just simply because, cause, you know, I, I have got some, some a lot of family members that I'm not insane about, but... Um, and we have a lot of differences, uh, but sometimes the easiest route is to just be like, okay, dokey, where we get through this time, and here's a gift, and you know, a hug, and um, oh, I love your dress, or whatever, I love your hair, and this, you know, cinnamon roll is fantastic, or whatever, <laughs> like, 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 truly, like, like playing a character a little bit, um, and I. I feel like your husband will be so appreciative because it is a big gift to him and you don't have to, and, and you know, don't, don't put it like that. Don't tell him like, I'm going to give you a gift, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, but, this is your gift. This right, is you right, get. right, right, right. But having been in relationships, um, some of my exes hated my parents and, and my parents are, they, are ain't unbelievable people, but they can be incredibly hard on outsiders, especially my mom. And uh, I love you, mom. And she's not listening to this. So I say <laughs> I say cunt too much. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kelsey. <laughs> but um, but anyway, but but uh, I think their their anger towards my parents really drove a big wedge. And if they had. Just pra like it's it's like if they just sucked it up uh, and yeah, just yeah uh, yeah a little bit took one for just, the team exactly exactly it goes a long way it goes a long way I think and um, but I, Kelsey you're not alone man you I feel like you are 
you are like speaking to probably 125 million Americans out there right now, like that are <laughs> dealing with probably a lot of this. more, probably more, yeah. and uh, oh, many more. But it, but it means what's like a um, a player on the football team that doesn't get enough credit, like on the defense, like a defensive player that. Should that get more credit. That doesn't, doesn't get enough credit? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like... Special teams. Well, yeah, yeah, special teams. <laughs> wow, you, are you a football fan? <laughs> I special, am, I am. Yeah, special teams yeah, don't yeah. get enough credit at all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you're so you you're a special teams member. You, you know what I mean? Like, I, I I don't know. That's that's my advice is is um, try and experiment this Christmas that is going to be awful. Jeremy, you. do you agree with Anna here? Uh, I I do I I do I, I mean I think it's I I have differences with that because that's too passive. Here's what I think the greatest thing you got already, Kels, is that you've identified the issue and the problem. A lot of people yeah. don't even have that identified. Yeah. So here's now what you can do <clears throat> is be actionable. One action is, you know, biting your lip and being quiet and a thing, but you can take actionable steps to actually solve your problem, whatever the hell the problem is. This year it's, you know, the issues with hanging with your husband's mother. Um, well, guess what? You're going to be in a household with a a shit ton of little kids, and that's what makes Christmas anyway. So you can focus on that. Or you can be like, hey, maybe even if she's an awful human being, maybe she makes a great pie. Exactly. Or, and go have a nice pie with somebody else's own. It's not like there's like four people in the room, right? There's so many other people. Now, you're, I think the issues come from, you know, years of sort of neglect and whatever. And like, you know, we, we get to choose our friends, we don't get to choose our family. You know, some family members I get along with better than others. And some are just like, how the hell are we related? So, you know, you got to sort of accept that and don't personalize, you know, you know, with the wedding stuff and all these things and having hurt feelings because the, the damn photo ain't up in her house. Well, it's her goddamn house. She can put up whatever the hell she wants. She can have, you know, posters of Ron Jeremy films, <laughs> you know, it's like, who, who cares? Right, Kelsey? It's her house. Fuck her. She can so what else. I'm hearing is I should get her a Ron Jeremy puzzle. <laughs> no, don't get her a Ron Jeremy puzzle. <laughs> don't do that. You're funny. No, you can, find, you can find a way to have fun and enjoy the holidays with, you know, what makes, you know, the holidays anyways, those little kids. And, and spend time with those kids and don't focus on that negative. Just focus on the positive and, yeah. and problem solve with that. You know yeah, I mean? and, and I, th I think you're completely right. And I think we're kind of saying the same thing. And later on, when, after the holidays have passed... If it Continue goes, drinking. Yes. <laughs> if the holidays are somewhat successful, if you, like, you know what, chin high and I'm just going to, like, power through this and be happy even when you're not happy, um, then maybe later on in the spring, maybe you can reach out and say, you know, um, I'd, I don't know. I'd, I'd Maybe check back in with us because I'm not sure if – I was going to say maybe you take her to lunch or something like that, but – but it might not be quite time for that. Yeah, we'll just take yeah. one step at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Step at a time. yeah keep, but, keep, yeah. The, keep the huddle yeah. tight, right? Yeah. You got your, you and, got your you daughter, know, like, right? The, exactly. You got your daughter. You got your and, husband. Keep you, the huddle tight. Exactly. And expand protect, from there. And pr protect your husband on this one. I say, protect your husband and 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 do him a service. I mean, I, I, like, uh, I I'm really lucky with Chris's family. Um, and uh, in my family, but man, you know, of course, there's there's the outliers that make you insane, and and uh, and, and I just try to uh, to uh, put a smile on my face and deliver a lot of obnoxious monologues from my childhood plays. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever done that seriously? Oh God, yeah, and it's so obnoxious. Do you, you offer? Do you offer it up, or do they ask no, you it for it? It was a long time ago. I don't right, do fine. it anymore, right, but. Okay. But still, I need a lot of attention. All right. but, Kelsey, um, are you good with this? Yeah, Kelsey, we. I am. Are Are you sure? I mean, it means. I am. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna huddle with the husband and roll in there like special team. That's right. That's nice. right. And protect him. Protect your daughter. And just be. And you know, k kill her with kindness. And it's gonna take like 18 years, but <laughs> but eventually you'll break through. And you know what? Eventually, her heart will warm. And it's just it just might take a minute. It's going to be hard for her youngest to for her to accept that her youngest is like is married and and you know maybe doesn't want you know another it's her bag like, of issues her problems exactly mm -hmm. like to expand the brood yeah. and and that's and that's your your personal decision. But 
but I but I would say I would say be as generous and brave as you can. Send me an email after the holidays. Let me know how it went. I will. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. Thanks. Happy right. holidays, Happy Kelsey. Holidays. That was a really Me fucking too. awesome call because that I'm no can relate to a ton of people. Thanks, Kelsey. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Everyone. Yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone can, can relate, relate to, that. to that. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. We have one more. Call. Uh, like, I wonder, am I going to be an insane mother-in-law if Jack gets married? I might be. Well, I mean, look, I'm sure there's a thousand people that hate you just as much as they love you. No, out there. no, there and aren't. Thing, yeah. No, I mean, it's, take it's, it back. It's just, it's just how it is, the balance of life, right? Oh, that's how you get your heart to beat slow. <laughs> you accept that people... Oh, yeah, there's, yeah. No, everyone loves me, Jeremy. It's, I'm sure there's so many people that hate me. And by the way, all those that love me, all those that hate me, well, I ultimately don't care unless you, I really have like, invested in you. Who could possibly hate you? There's, I'm sure there's a shit ton of people that hate my Nobody guts. Nobody hates really? you. Really? I'm sure. No. I accept no. that fact. I accept the fact that there's the, the amount of what love people think they have for me or hatred that they might have for me is it could be equal. But again, how it has value in my life is like, all right, well, if my brother says something terrible, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be affected. Yeah. Or if some stranger in the street wants to slap me in their face or give me a hug or a rub down, I'm like, well, I got to be, you know, it's all at arm's length yeah. and not like uh, emotionally invested or spiritually invested. Or, okay, I need to learn from this. <laughs> how do you feel? about okay. raising your daughter in Los Angeles? Uh, I don't like the idea, personally. Me, me neither. I, mean, yeah. I don't I'm, like the idea of you I'm a resident of Nevada, and I just, I'd rather be in the nature. I know that, we're sort of Washington folks, and there's yeah. a great yeah. high school in this little yeah. island. I don't get to make that decision, though. You guys can both make that decision. I don't get to. Yeah, because uh, I'm a single dad. So. Yeah, but but you know we still we love to we we're working you know we. Yeah, I'm different. You know, yeah, but see, I maybe because I'm single, like I'm I'm happy to never do a movie again if I have my baby full time. You know. Yeah. I'm so happy to. Yeah. And, and go be in the in the woods and teach her and learn. Well, and she's and learn. amazing. I I love her. She's you know, I got someone that's crazy about me at least for now. I love her too. And and she's you know what I love best, you're raising a strong daughter. She's gonna be uh, she's gonna be a stud. She's gonna be she's gonna be a stud. Okay. Should we, should we try her? We're yes. gonna we're gonna try Laura now. She is in Charlotte and she is 28. Hello. Hey Laura, it's Sim. What's going on? How are you? I'm good. Yeah. So Anna is here, and she's going to introduce our guest to you. Hi, Laura. Hi, Anna. So good to talk to you. Oh, it's so good to talk to you. You just sound lovely. And guess what? We have Jeremy Renner here. Um, Hi, Laura. How Hi. are you? Hi. How are on? you? Uh, I'm excellent. So, Laura. Well, I love y'all, and thank you so much for calling me. Well, thank you so much for submitting a question and, and being courageous enough to come on this podcast where we give you idiotic advice. I'm really excited about this question, <laughs> by the way. I'm really excited about it. So, Laura, why does your boyfriend's obsession with college football bother you so much? <sighs> well, there's many reasons. Um, I guess I'll kind of start with the most recent reason that kind of bugs me a lot. So I planned this trip for our birthdays to Aspen and, you know, I spent a lot of time planning. Um, it was just a couple of days, so I had everything planned out, like we were going to do this hike and then go here for dinner and this here for lunch. And the Clemson game, of course, was at like six or seven o'clock at night and we couldn't go out to dinner. We couldn't, you know, do anything that we wanted to do because everything has to revolve around football. Now, wait, all and football, just college football and all college football? Probably teams? just Clemson football, right? You know what? I think that this stupid fantasy thing ruined everything because, oh, you know, yeah, when they're quarterbacks so... in this game, they have to watch, you know, every single game that's on that day. They got like a player in this game, player in that game. So basically every Saturday during the fall is all football. All and every Sunday because you said he does fantasy as well? Well, he actually does college he does college fantasy. fantasy. Wow, that's that's aggressive. Is there such a thing? There is, but it's hardcore because there are so many college football players. That's really hardcore. Oh. He must it's be really awful. into it. And um, he started years ago before any apps were even created. So he did everything by hand. So it took hours. 
He did all the research and it was miserable. <laughs> He's hardcore. So is it just taking a, t- a time away from you? Is that what your problem is that you want to hang out with him on Saturdays? Well, no, well, the, she planned a trip to Aspen and wanted to go hiking. Instead, he wants to yeah, stay in the hotel wedding. and like, He's on I, wedding I don't see, I don't see what, I really don't see what the big deal is because if, you know, I'm a huge football fan and, and I know, and I have friends that kind of revolve, you know, even weddings and events around USC football. Um, I, I don't think, I think this is a common thing. And I, and I feel like during the football season, maybe you should, I don't know. Oh. You can wow. kind of give, give. I mean, I just feel like it's okay to let him have football. Fuck you. Just, it's Why? just during, let him have football. It's, it's just only, during yeah, the it's season. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, listen. Uh, I, sorry. Go ahead. But, but I, I want to weigh no, in. No, no, no. You go. Well, here's the <laughs> I thing. Just, you just what? No, sorry. You go because this is your no, story. No, I babble. So, yeah, you go. I don't. I yeah, babble, don't too. Know. I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck I'm talking right, about. Anna, why do you disagree I'm with me? I'm way worse than you. Well, okay, so here's the thing. I, I, I respect the idea that, yes, he has this very strong passion that will probably be lifelong, uh, you know, with fantasy football and, 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 like, doing all the things. And, yes, during the fall, he may be completely preoccupied. However... He should be able to say, um, baby, I, I he, like th- there should, he should be able to make it up in some way. So like whether it's a nice dinner in the Asp- in Aspen or taking you in the springtime to some place, like he should, th- there should at least be a, an acknowledgement of like, this is taking, I know, I, baby, I understand this is taking a lot of time away from our relationship. I really love you for letting, for, you know, I, for letting me get to do this. Um, and it, it well, most, you know, most guys will never say that though. No. Most people aren't that conscious enough to know like, oh, what? Oh, I'm just I'm just going to do what I love to do and it makes me happier coming home. At least don't hate me for doing something I'm happy doing. But, but can't now, but, I'm not defending it ultimately, but like, you know, there's not that so there's you not a lot of people that, are that conscious that people are, I know what I'm doing. Like, look, you how you let, you let Chris go away for how long to go shoot a movie? Like, oh, where's where's the father of my child? And then you let him go for 5 months to go shoot a movie in like Atlanta or somewhere else and like you're going to be okay with that? Yeah. And like, well, but why are you okay with it? But she can complain. But what if you? you know, it's well, just about the complaint, right? But just, you know, but Chris is a good dude in the thing. He wants to be a father. Well, and it's also his job. You know what I mean? Right. Like, well, it's not necessarily. What, but that's a hobby is just as important as someone's job, right? Because right. maybe this guy hates his job. I don't but know what his job can, is, but this guy it makes him happy. He's not out right. like murdering people Dude, no, or no, no, no. you know I, going to strip clubs. He likes football. I totally hear a little you on too that. much, by the way. Maybe <laughs> a little too much. I totally but, hear you on that. But but at least. He can acknowledge that idea. Yeah, it would be nice that he would acknowledge that. And it would be nice. During, but most people don't. Is the issue? But why? Guys so, are but, guys but are this... guys are dumb. Guys don't have to plan well. By the way, um, uh, Laura, you know, and, and I know that you know that it requires a lot of energy, and then it you know gets totally shat on, and that must feel shitty. Um, I don't know if he, wow, it, this is a wonderfully uplifting, Jeremy. <laughs> Shut up! Shut <laughs> up! It's so true, though. But Sometimes you, you know, it's so true. yeah. But it's look. I like I don't know. I don't. I don't know your man at all, and or shit. Though I don't even know you. But it, certainly behavior, I do know. And you know, it's like when someone is conscious, which doesn't sound like he's really accountable, or responsible for how much time he's spending, you know, doing something else. But for you to focus on and, and blaming, you know, football or, or whatever it might be, I don't know if that's really energy you need to spend no, on. No, 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 you no, should, no. You should, you know, you can navigate that another way. Or if it's not football, fuck, it could be something else. And then just insert that as the issue or the obstacle. Then what the hell are you going to do about it? You can, and you're totally valid in having the feelings you're having 100%. And I feel like maybe he needs to kind of sort of wake up in, in, in a different way and sort of realize that, oh, wait, be. can you balance? How do you find balance right. in life? But that requires, fuck, what I'm talking about is it requires <laughs> consciousness. It requires fucking accountability and consciousness, which most people don't. But there are fucking a lot of sheep out there in the planet. On that. But you have to be conscious to work so, on something. You so have to be he, aware of something so to work say, on it. He's so aware of football and so, fuck, at the, you know, if he... And I hope he's really good at fantasy, by the way, Laura. But, you know, if you take someone that's so, like, hyper-focused on something that he loves, what if he applied that to being a father or being a, an amazing boyfriend or husband or whatever it might be? 
that's good that you might agree with, then we're not sitting here having this conversation from that, so from uh, North Carolina or wherever the hell, Charlotte, yeah. Um, no, but but I, but here's the thing: is that in timing is everything. So if if you if you can say, I know I, I like I I fell in love with you, knowing that how much football meant to you. And I love watching it with you. I don't know if you do or not, but uh, and and I totally respect that, that, that this is the person that I fell in love with, and and this is also you know one of like like a passion of yours. But I would also really love it if we found something maybe in the springtime or whatever yeah. where we find. Well, give it, give it, did you guys fight about this by the way about the thing or is it just a, a thing you're holding in? Oh, I mean, yeah, it, it definitely causes fights. Like, we have a New Year's Eve party we're going to, and right. we don't know if they're going to show the Clemson OSU game. So it's like, I've been planning this whole thing for a while. Right. Okay, and see, okay, it, 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 it. right. Right, right. I, then I think you go, okay, you this go is, without him. Th- yeah, right. This is when you can now start <laughs> planning. Well, we, you, I mean just, here, here's how you engage. She needs to behave, she needs to behave but selfishly. I'm, I'm looking for something to give you that's actionable. I'm serious. Now you can actually talk about these things and saying, like, it's not something you're going to think and feel. You're going to actually have it and address this in a way. And like, okay, I'm going to love that you and how much you love football and how passionate you are about it. And I want you to do all these things. He's like, fuck, yeah, I got a free pass for four months. Awesome. I love my girl. But then with that has to come with something else, like with suggesting. You have to put out um, uh, something else that, that meets your needs. Or exactly. you've got you to spend time on you too, Mama. That's totally you go find right. something for you to do exactly. that makes you just as happy as football makes for him. And let him do that and you do that. But you also got to meet in the middle and spend time on right. your relationship as, a, as like it's a third party right. in your, your totally. living, right, in your life. And then what do you guys do to spend time for your relations mm-hmm. together. Right. And, and it's not it, fucking just sex or this, that. You've got to do, there's got to be a list of things that you do that's actionable about your relationship. Shit you do for yourself, Laura. So like, yeah. what do you, what do you love just as much as he loves football? Don't tell me it's planning vacations for you guys. <laughs> but so you're saying I I've heard that three times already. Uh, What's that? I, I'm saying that even I if, said, do you saying I should plan a trip to Greece? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, just, just, but but here's <laughs> here's the thing. Even if even if you haven't fi- found quite the thing yet that he loves as much as football, I I would definitely focus on if if he is he's into his thing and it and and it forces you right now to feel like you're more generous than he is. Right, like because the weekends are dedicated to his football, so you need to find even if it's stuff that you don't quite enjoy yet, but you need to find like long walks or like mm-hmm. like 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 start to behave in a selfish way, and not in, selfish is sort of the wrong word, but at least self serving, and so you're not waiting for the game to end. You you have you know whatever go to a museum, plan time like you know with friends, like do definitely carve out your time so you're not feeling like you're waiting for the game and for his shit to be over and um and and resenting like his love and and I I think that he'll he'll really he'll start to be I don't know. He How do you feel about him planning uh, things around football, like certain, like like fun events that that include I her think that or she her friends? Does, I think that she does. Then just say like, meet me there after the game, babe. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I really, I, and even though it's not ideal, because of course you want to go together and everything, but this is this is where you have to play a little hardball, and uh, and and serve yourself. Because that's what he's doing, and it won't it won't serve you well if you continue to do like ninety percent of the compromise. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. um, I think that you have to you stand gotta, your ground, Mama. You got to yeah. stand your ground. You know, yeah. be be clear. I will right? try. Yeah, you give him freedom, but you stand your ground. Yeah, and if go. If you give him freedom, go, it's go, only going to help you. And, and just and honestly, like. Go to the New Year's party alone. Would you ever do that? She wouldn't do that, though. Why? She wouldn't do that. Why not? A New Year's Eve party alone without yeah, your boyfriend? Come fuck on. yeah. She wouldn't go. Oh would my you God, go, she would Laura? Have would so you go? So much more fun. Laura, you would well, never go alone. I'm planning this whole like 
30th surprise birthday party for my best friend, and it's been this huge ordeal. What, what do you plan for you, though? What do you What do you plan for you? You're always planning something for you guys as a unit, but what do you plan for you? He certainly plans on, you know, what he's doing every Sunday. What do you plan for you, darling? How do you take care of yourself? Like, how do you how do you empower yourself as a woman, as a as a human being? You know what I mean? Separate from from what he's doing. I work out. Okay, well, that's good. I sound so lame. Um, no. I ski, awesome. I you know, hang out with my friends. Okay. Go on road trips. Do you have any sort of hobbies that you know you don't have to be so psycho uh, about it like he is with football? But you know, do you have anything that you know kind of really you know floats your boat? Yeah, I mean, I guess you know. Well, oh, the pause is already telling me the answer of why you're so obsessed with planning. Do you planning want to take and, tap dance? Yeah. dancing lessons. Explore with me? those things. It, Explore but, those but things. They're actually, but go be wrong. Go try. Go try tap dancing. You know, fuck it. On Sundays, while he goes does football, try something, and you know, there you go. And truthfully, about and fail. this New Year's thing, do it alone. Just say, honey, I I love you. I know that the football is really important to you. But you know what also is important to me is this party. So I'm going to go. I hope I hope I meet you there. I love you. Um, you know, ooh, go Clemson. Doesn't that stuff just feed the wedge? But if we lose, he's going to be like devastated. For oh, him. don't coddle him. <laughs> oh, Whatever God. you do, do not coddle him. How about just put him down? Just do that. Just put the fucker like, down. Oh, honey, God, I'm sorry. Like you a bad dog. Go lay down in the corner. The fuck, <laughs> man. Fucking miss the touchdown, babe. Yeah, you really fucking lost it for us. Yeah, I mean, you gotta take a stand. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta take I a stand. But I do hate it when I men get re- so emotionally involved. Yeah, well, don't no get me wrong. I'm much more... They're bummed out. They're so bummed out that you have to. When as a USC woman... Rose, uh, lost the Rose Bowl, I couldn't sleep for like a week. So I understand where this guy is yeah, coming from. Yeah, but you don't necessarily need your woman to like coddle you back. To no, a I don't happy need place. coddling. I'm just saying I just need to be like left alone. No, and I deal don't with coddle. It. I don't. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, give into that behavior. Yeah, I think you gotta. You gotta. I think you got to make some kind of a stand man and um empower yourself as a woman for sure and yeah, if he's gonna look boys are always gonna be boys in, in just in grown-ass men bodies they're always gonna be 14 and his love for this thing is not, a, it's not it's not a, it, well it, it, you know whatever it is what it is so the advice is don't I, you can't change him you just do something for yourself uh, well that, that's one actionable step to do for yourself because she's couldn't even answer like you, what the hell she's going to do for herself but that's all like, you can i plan do. for my boyfriend and a thing and i want to have this thing well obviously you have very different sort of ideas on like you know how much time you spend in a relationship together and blah 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 or again i don't know this motherfucker but all i know is he's not spending any time or maybe it's just not balanced and i think whenever there's an imbalance mm-hmm. there's a huge problem you got to create balance and moderate anything in your life, the good and the bad. So stop fucking planning shit. Okay? Plan oh, shit for you. Jimmy Renner's mean. No. <laughs> I was I'm planning pointed. you a surprise party. I'm pointed, party and... motherfucker. I'm pointed. <laughs> so, you know, I'm on your side. I, you know, Laura, you know, I'm, I'm so on your side and really not on his side at all because I think it's so imbalanced. Um, the only thing I think, you know, I, I, I can address with you is just saying, like, you've told me X, Y, Z things about what you've done for yourself. And there's really almost nothing outside of, like, going to the gym and, like, you know, sitting down to pee. You know, like, really right. obvious sort of things that you can do to fill your time. And obviously you want to spend right. time with, with someone you love, right? Uh, or you can stand up and pee. I don't give a fuck. But you ultimately, you know what? Take care of yourself, mama. And then, you know, it, it, everything else will, will fall into place. Right. If, if you hold your own ground, it falls into place. And then maybe it's at the sacrifice of the relationship. But you could at least walk away with your, your head, head up high, knowing that you're always going to be more well balanced and more compassionate because you're a woman. Right. You were born with empathy mm-hmm. and compassion. And that makes you already much more amazing than any man's going to be. Right. So you just got to you know, find patience and then also take care of yourself. And the rest will sort of fall into place. So fuck New Year's Eve. Who cares? You know, I don't know what the hell I'm doing for New Year's Eve. Hey, come out to California. Let's have a party at my house. I don't give a shit. I still don't know what I'm doing. New Year's. Laura, do you want to do you want to come New over, Jeremy's? New Year's sucks, by the way. It does. New Year's is such a sucky. What a sucky night that is. It is. It really is. Do I sound like it's such a negative night? No, no, I agree with you. No, it's, it's just like a big build up. It's like a big it's build up for always what? Always so disappointing. Wing, 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 yeah. And you're with him, and he doesn't kiss. <laughs> he doesn't kiss you at midnight. Right. No, so you're, stupid. You're gonna fight because of champagne shitty. Yeah. Like, yeah, what an awful night. I know. It's it like is. it's like Valentine, some Hallmark holiday. But don't you do kind of don't you sort of like that song? No. <laughs> no. No, and like nothing about it. <laughs> no. 
No. Yeah, I'm, already fall, I'm falling asleep already. Oh my god! Happy New Year's! Oh my god! Um, <laughs> oh god, god. Laura! Call, yeah, Laura. So okay, the he, the wrap up advice is be selfish. And we no. love you. And we love you. Jeremy's saying no. Take, no, just take, take care of yourself. Yeah. That's what I'm that doesn't mean being selfish. Take care of yourself. She's a very giving woman, too. right? That's <laughs> also oh my God. feeding that. I've never woman argued her. with a guest more. I'm going to stab you with this felt marker. <laughs> oh, that's my felt marker. I'm going to give you a dirty Sanchez mustache real quick. <laughs> okay. You ready great. for it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. No. Go, Laura, go. yes. Yeah. Keep at it. You're badass. Laura. I think, I think you're right. Thank you so much for hanging out yeah, with us tonight. Yeah, thank you. And uh, oh, thank and you. go it's go Clemson so and and have a happy holidays and and have a great New Year whatever yes. you decide to do. Oh, thank you! Well, it was great talking to y'all, and you, I can't wait to hear. Hey, out of my keep us posted, podcast. okay? <laughs> keep us posted. Have a good night. All good right. night, Laura. We love you. Don't get arrested. Bye. Okay. You, I- oh. Hung up on Why do you, you always... Because I thought she said bye. She no. said, did she, did she said bye, right? I, I thought she said knee highs. I love you. I thought she oh, said something about really? her knee highs. I just right. thought she Sorry, was saying, Laura. I love you, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we... Um... Oh, I guess who's doing the finger twirl? Uh, what does that mean? He wants to tickle me? <laughs> uh-huh. So, Sim has developed this incredibly complicated... It's almost like sign language. Mm. He twirls his finger in the air. And I think what it means is keep on going for another couple of hours. Right? Yeah, guys, right. How much time do you have? You want to have another hour, two hours? No, I have people in the studio. I got to get up. All right, so right, right next door. All right, all right. Good well, night. I'm happy to good do night. it. Good night, dear <laughs> listener. Wait, um, wait. So arrival, I, arrival. I, mean, I, could, I, I can do this Jeremy, weekly no. because it's like wait, right hold here. On. Do you want to? Do you want to? You were, by the way, you're <laughs> amazing at giving yeah, advice. We, I, I love podcast. You really threw it down. That was awesome. Yeah, you did, and. Also, you're so fucking brilliant in Arrival, which is a really brilliant movie. And I know you're, you, you, you've been on a crazy ass press tour, mm. um, but but you're really fucking great in it's, it. It's and an it's incredible a, movie. It's an incredible movie, and uh, happy to be a part of that that, that film. Yeah. You and Amy Adams are just phenomenal. She's fantastic. She's the reason why I did the film, and it's just a really strong role for for a woman. And then she's been a good friend of mine for a very long time, and um. I just, I, would you do a rival too with me? Um, would I be the reason that you would um, sign up for still, that? Still hurting? <laughs> so, yeah, have they, have, are they gone yet? <laughs> <laughs> Tick, tickle your nuts. <laughs> Come on, just, just Jeremy. A, just, a chip, just for a minute, I'm in. House Bunny, Renner, House Renner Bunny and four. I'm in. House Bunny and I'm four. <laughs> uh, I'm in for it for sure. I'm gonna, do, um, I'm gonna do House Bunny with you. Thank you. I'm gonna be like the creepy janitor, Ooh, the I guy with the hose, it. just working the. I oh, love it. What's going oh. on, ladies? Um, That's my only line in the whole movie, ladies. How um, are okay. You? Uh, hey, Randy, the upstairs <laughs> toilet is leaking. Ladies. <laughs> Thanks, Rand. <laughs> Oopsie, I'm hopping out of the shower. Where's my towel? Ladies. <laughs> All right. Good to see you. <laughs> House Bunny 4, coming to theaters near you. <laughs> we just skipped two and three, but I love it. <laughs> uh, let's go right to the fourth one. <laughs> hey, you guys, group meeting... Does anyone think that Randy's going to kill us? <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> Ooh, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Jeremy Renner, so much for thank being here. Thank you so much, Jeremy Renner. And let's also, Anna, you and I should thank uh, the lovely and beautiful people over at iTunes who just gave us an incredible, incredible recognition, which yeah. was best of iTunes 2016. We're on an incredible list with some amazing podcasts, and we just can't thank the people from iTunes enough. We love you guys yes, so much. Thank you Thanks so iTunes. much, iTunes. And uh, yeah, it's a huge honor. We, we feel like we're sort of the babies in the group and uh, amongst like some incredible yeah, podcasts. Malcolm Gladwell and NPR. Fuck you, his, don't plug yeah. them. Oh, you're right. Okay, sure. No, but it's true. Malcolm Gladwell and... Yeah. Oh, now you're plugging them. <laughs> And for all those that are listening to this while they're at work, get back to work, motherfuckers. <laughs> That's right. There are a bunch of people working right now. <laughs> we love you're you. Fired. We love you. You're we fired. Love you. Follow us on Qualify, all the social media. Watch Arrival. It's going to win Best Picture. At least I hope it does. Thank you so much. Good night. Yeah, thank you all. Good night and good work day. She's
Um, yeah, in that general direction. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm mm-hmm. going to an audition. Oh, nice. Do you like um, living in L.A.? No, I despise it. Oh. There's things that I really like about it. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I really like that... Um, I really like that there's kind of a sense of spirituality here that I haven't really found anywhere else. Um, hey, Hazmat, can you take uh, get off Santa Monica? Just go sunset all the way out. Uh, no, it looks like sunset is completely blocked, so we're gonna be stuck in this traffic for a while. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate. Thanks, bud. Um, oh my God, this I'm is sorry. So what, weird. I'm, I'm sorry. What happened? Oh no, this is so weird. I have this like top secret audition, and I have to study my lines. All right. Um. I hope you okay. studied. This is weird, but is there any chance you could help me? Oh uh, well, I don't, I don't know anything about. Could you just play? Um, okay, I'm okay because it's t- top secret. I don't really know what it's about, but I just would love, like maybe, um, I don't know. I'd love maybe uh, some advice. Okay. Um, even if you're not Jeremy Renner, I still feel like. You seem like a cool person. You want me just to read this with you? Yeah. yeah. I'll be Janet, and you could be Clay, okay? Okay. Okay, you saw at the top it says interior Clay's bungalow. Right. Janet enters. That's me. Uh-huh. I don't know what else it says, but I think it says something an, cool. An ethereal brunette with luscious breasts. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's why I'm sort of boring this top. Gotcha. Um Okay. Listen, pal, I'd love to have you out. Uh, you don't have to fucking do that no more, Janet. I quit therapy. So I said, give me back what is mine, bitch, or go back to Boise. Oh, yeah, Janet? Thanks for the information, bitch. You call me, tell me to bring my kids, and you are chilling with drifters, Clay. I'm not playing ball with this fucked up vibe here, Janet. You fucking think it's my fault? Okay, I think there's not a question mark, though. Ah, uh, well, look, I, you know, I don't do this for a living, so... Oh, okay. So, uh, you, so you, you, you fucking think it's my fault? My fault? That's how I would read it. My fault. Can we do it again? Yeah, okay. Good. Wait, this is something <laughs> do you, you think I should do more passion, or what? Like, should I have more, um, like, like, I've been abused... Or I, I think you should just learn, learn the lines. Okay. It would be probably the easiest thing. There's three of them. Okay. So if you learn the lines, you might have a better shot. Of, yeah, but a couple to, of them have more something. than one sentence. Or at least commas. Right. So maybe, you know. Okay. Do, do you have a good memory? Yeah. Are you sure Sunset is really... Has sorry, not, sorry. Is, We're going to be here for a while. <clears throat> okay. Listen, pal. Wait, you know what? Maybe I should do it more lusty. Let's let's try that. Okay. Listen, pal. I'd love to have you out. You don't have to fucking do that no more, Janet. I quit therapy. So I said, give me back what is mine, bitch, or go back to Boise. Oh, yeah, Janet? Thanks for the information, bitch. You call me, tell me to bring my kids, and you are chilling with drifters, Clay. I'm not playing ball with this fucked up vibe here, Janet. You fucking think it's my fault. I just had to do the question. That was really good. Uh, better, right? I yeah. got chills. That was so yeah. good. So, so look, yeah, it's kind of kind of three's company sort of vibe. Is I it? think it's. I just think you're really good. Uh, I'm just reading this this awful stuff oh my god no 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 it's not it's like top i think i'm getting car sick from looking oh it looks like your stop is coming up jeremy oh i'm yeah oh my god you are what oh i knew it 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 you were jeremy banner oh my god i knew that's why you were so good you scoundrel oh my god can i ask a huge favor is there any way i could contact you (laughs) you want a selfie no i don't do that but is there any I, i just feel like is there any way i could contact you yeah sure um, like your number, I mean, smoke signals work best for me. I don't have a cell phone. Oh yeah. Shit. Yeah. Well, oh hazmat, hazmat. Can, yeah. I can, I can, can get you up. his info. Yeah. Oh really? And what yeah. agent, like who's your agent? Uh, yeah, at CAA. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'll just call them and say... Yeah, they... just call and ask for me there. You can totally get a hold of me. Okay, cool. Totally. Oh, my God. Yeah. I feel like you saved me. If I get this role, I am totally crediting you. Well, I think you should get it because you're bodacious and luscious. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good luck to you. Oh my God, good luck to you too. I need it. I hope you get the role, whatever yeah. you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You have glitter on your face. Yeah, I know. Were you at a strip club? Yes, I was. <laughs> Bye, Jeremy. We'll, we'll see you later. <laughs> can, I, can I get your phone number so I can block you and then delete you? <laughs> do you want to do a five minute break and we'll do the yeah. calls? Yeah, great. All right. Okay. <laughs> Involved in the scene, I can calm myself down a bit, but I um, I wish that I had that ability to um, to kind of uh, complete, not only sort of completely ignore the camera, but also ignore the director. <laughs> yeah, I got pretty good at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just you know, for me, it's just I've always built a um, uh, a life on being fearless. And yeah, just, and also just not caring, and um, those the combination of that just allows me to kind of do whatever, whenever, oh, at God whatever damn time. I envy you know? that. Yeah, that well, it's, it also you know requires to be egoless and um, kind of just let go of things. And yeah, that, that, it allows for a lot of fun, a lot of freedom. I do feel like with comedy, it's given me. Um, I really try to embrace the idea of. of a lack of vanity with the characters, yeah. even if the characters themselves are vain, I attempt to, uh, you know, just make an ass out of myself as much as possible. Um, and uh, I think I've succeeded to some degree. Yeah, and, con <laughs> and, con and like written comedy too. It's like maybe you and I, how you and I grew up too. It's you know very different nowadays than it was back in the you know. Brady Bunch and you know Good Times and all these kind of shows a very sort of different scripted kind of thing you know like Michael J. Fox is like a genius at taking you know one written joke and making three out of it I don't like for me I couldn't do that and because I'm much more of a uh, my own verbiage in the thing and I just couldn't deliver a line like uh, on a show and be like oh well, this is how it'll be funny I, I, that doesn't make it, any sense. It makes it too technical to me. It's like, oh, maybe kind of. And then you have to do it two or three, four times, and it's maybe not quite as funny anymore. And oh then, my god! So I can never. I would never. You're gauge speaking about on that. my life with mom. I mean, I love oh. doing it, but it is. It is like sometimes a line. It feels like okay. I just have to jump into the deep end and own this line. And yeah, I yeah. Set up, set up joke. Set up, set up joke. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, sometimes ooh. I'm a t-ball stand. Oof. Um, yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. That's that's. Terrifying to me, actually. It's it it can be it yeah it is tough. And you're, when when you're rehearsing it all week, you're right. It sometimes it feels like oh man, this am I am I doing this right? And uh, yeah, it's but but I also love the mechanics of doing a, a multicam. Like like there's something that's really you know kind of surgical and theatrical about it, and very much like technical being, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People think like, oh, there must be lots of improv. No, fuck, no. There's no improv, and uh, and so that that requires sort of a different level of kind of. I mean, what am I talking about? Me? I have Jeremy <laughs> Renner. Uh, okay, but listen, Jeremy, we're gonna do something weird. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I play a character named Karen Sarducci. She's the CEO of Imaginarium Studios, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and she's called you in for a general, which you've generously agreed okay. uh, to to go to. You, but I did send a car for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to I'm going to pitch you a couple of movie ideas as Karen Sarducci. Okay, are you ready? This yep. is my assistant Donovan. He'll lead you. Hi, I'm Donovan. Jeremy. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, Karen is really excited to see you, and are you ready to see her right now? Yeah. I'm, I'm would awesome. yeah, would yeah. you like anything to drink? Um, yeah, no, I'm good, actually. It's okay, good. right yeah. this way. Yeah. Karen, I'd like you to meet Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. Hi, Karen. How are you? Uh, oh, my God. What an honor and a thrill. Thank you so much for being here. You look thrilled. I am thrilled. <laughs> um, I have had my eye on you for a long time. I just think you're absolutely brilliant. Mm. Uh, my children, um, Milo and Ventimiglia, we were just recently in Antwerp, and um, and they sort of have their finger on the pulse of Hollywood, um, and they were saying how much they loved you. So we're, um, we're we have the 
rights to a couple of movies that we're making some sequels to, and I'd love to sort of loose. We don't have the scripts, but I'd love to loosely pitch you um, and see what your interest level is. Let's keep it loose. All right. I yeah. know. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. I can see you don't have any shoes on. That's it's not funny. creepy at all. No, no, no. Yeah. I've got um, like a, a heel spur just like Donald ah, Trump. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. One yes. of those. Okay. Yeah. So what do you got? What's, what's... Um, well, now, the, the first movie I'd like to pitch to you um, is called The Blind Side 2. Mm. Field goal is good. Um, you would play a character named Scott. A blind 15 year old foster kid. 15? Yes. Um, you've had a really hard life, and this wonderful Southern family takes you in. Um, they're able to look past your blindness and see your good heart. Um, Darby, who's the strong willed mother of three, teaches you how to kick a field goal. Um, you go on, you're so good, you go on to state and win the championship for your team with a game-winning kick. Mm-hmm. Um, and you go on to become the first blind college kicker. You get a scholarship. Although Darby wants you to finish school, high school, before you uh, accept your scholarship. So uh, we already have a deal with Celine Dion to play Darby. Um, and also, we're thinking, I, and I would, I would love your thoughts on this, we have a deal with Jason Statham mm-hmm. in general, and so we were thinking he would be kind of the hard-ass coach who's sort of unwilling to accept a blind field goal kicker initially, but then he sees how good you are because he can see. Right, right. <laughs> now, how, how good is Celine Dion? Did you... Oh, she's fantastic. Yeah. She's, yep, she uh, she's, huh. uh, sells out all of her audience. I mean, she can sing. She can sing. She, she can really sing. Can. Does she sing in this? Well, she, I, I, I was sort of thinking that not only would she sing sort of like a beautiful number, um, like, you know, I can kick a goal or whatever, like a, you know, whatever. Right. But she sings you through um, the field goal kicking. That's, um, yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking out loud. Maybe you have an earbud uh, while you're kicking. Uh, the tension's high, and she sings to you, um, and that's what helps you score. That um, this is all loose. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it is loose. Change. It is loose, and I like scoring. Um, Maybe yeah. she teaches you how to drive later on when you turn sixteen. Yeah, I, th- I think that might be that might be a cool uh, B plot. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you like it? Um, probably not my vibe, Mama. Not uh, my vibe. And please don't call me Mama. Again. Okay. I, I really. I, how about hot sauce? Uh, Ass nuts? Uh, you're, you're very funny. I didn't know you did comedy. The uh, no, I don't. I didn't do comedy. Yeah. Uh, that's well, you, that's you, you, you're pitching me any comedies? Uh, no. No? Okay. All right, so Blindside 2, we'll talk to your agent about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll think, uh, about, I'll think about that one. Field goal is good. Yeah. Um, I would think, you, I think you're perfect for it. Yeah, I mean, I feel can, like you know, I can play Can you 15. look at me as though you are blind? Yeah, I'm try, doing, I'm try doing, it right now. I'm doing, I am doing it right now. Okay, listen to my voice and pretend to look at me. Mm-hmm. It's sort of an audition. Okay, so you're not really looking at me at no, all. No, no. All right, but maybe you're imagining um, scoring the uh, the goal. All right, I like that. Mm. Now, listen. The second project we have the rights to is Hurt Locker Two, uh, Jefferson st- High. Still hurting? Oh no, I think still hurting might be a better title. Well, hear hear me out. I mean, we st- we we own the rights to Hurt Locker now, um, so we would still like to capitalize on that. We could do Hurt Locker Two, still hurting Jefferson High. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. So, um, the once again, this is Milo and Ventimiglia. They um, they can. Cons- I have to give them credit. They're brilliant. They conceived of this idea. Um, now you have been discharged from the army okay mm-hmm. you've become a substitute teacher makes sense um now for some reason because you are kind of let's say you're not a typical substitute teacher that just plays heads up seven up you actually make the kids work now the football team gets mad right they shove you in a locker um and uh, you have no way out. So uh, we figured that happens in the first uh, 12 minutes or so. Okay. And uh, the rest of 
the movie You're in the Locker. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if you have deemed... I'm not sure. Maybe it's a happy space. Maybe it's a... I don't know. Um, I, I mean, you tell me what you, how you would like to see it well, end. Well, it sounds like it's a pretty cheap budget. <laughs> well, uh... What is the know, budget of this movie? Donovan, shut the fuck Sorry. up. Sorry. Yeah. Um... Well, we we would like it to be a festival film, so somewhere, let's say, between eighteen to twenty-five. Sense. Of course, you. Well, you would you would be getting. I mean, we're paying for your talent. Uh, your agent loves this idea, by the way. Oh, does uh, he? Yeah. yeah. How many? Do you do you make a lot of movies? Do you? Oh. Karen, I'm, I don't see movies. I don't. Do you see all these posters? Uh, I've mm. done all of these. Oh yeah. Um. Yes, and I and. Truthfully, Jeremy, I want to be the person who gets you that big old gold. I want to get you eight big old gold statues. Oh, wow. wow, no one's ever said that to me yeah, before. Well, I, I, I want that for you. Yeah, well, thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. So, How long have you guys worked together, by the way? 18 years. Wow. She hasn't promoted me yet. Wow. Shut the fuck up. How old are you? Do you know why I haven't promoted him? I don't know. Because he keeps fucking interrupting. Ah. Uh. He's supposed to answer the fucking phone. Um, anyway, so Hurt Locker 2, Still Hurting Jefferson High, and The Blind Side 2, Field Goal is good. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking yeah. to your agent. Yeah. Uh, we're working out the yeah, deals. That's, that's pretty good. Thank you so much I, for coming yeah, thanks in. For, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Do you need validation? He, I've um, got him a car. I'm, oh, I'm, that's right. I'm pretty validated. Uh, Jimmy, what a pleasure. I can't wait to tell Milo and Ventimiglia that you came in. Thanks, Mama. <laughs> what was that? Balls? Ass nuts. Ass nuts. <laughs> I like a little ass nut. That provides such an interesting visual. Yes. Nuts, balls. Yeah. If you're, if you're big, coming out of your ass. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Huh? If only I, I wish I had ass nuts. That would really make me unique. <laughs> That's right. Um, okay, now we're going to move on to, um, now you're done with poor Karen. Creepy Karen. Creepy Karen. <laughs> Karen Sarducci. She just, she doesn't know what to do. Um, okay. I, def I definitely know somebody like her. You do? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I think we've, I don't know. You might be, that's where we might have gotten it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say her damn name. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so now oh i kind of i feel like i want to do i'm gonna do deal breaker number two you want to do that first yeah and then i may and then i may go on to um tosh but yeah yeah okay. let's do it okay how do you proceed uh should i just do the second yeah, one then do the do this do the you know what the, do the first one okay you're about to shoot a movie starring meryl streep Okay. Called Mother May I. Yeah. The script is already getting early Oscar buzz. Before you begin shooting, Meryl invites you to her home in Ojai to bond over lunch. You arrive and enjoy great conversation and a lovely meal of black truffle risotto that Meryl has personally prepared for you. Fantastic. Um, at the end of the lunch, she um, she says, as I'm getting to know you, uh, Jeremy... I really like you, but I'm I'm just not quite sure you're right for the project. Uh, when you were in the bathroom, I call. I just want to be upfront. I called my agent and we recast you with Casey Affleck. But um, I know that you're attached to the project and passionate about it. Um, so I would love it if you're still on board, and I want you as my personal makeup artist. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I I know you're amazing. I I love a lymphatic massage every morning. Um, can I can I count you in? Uh, you're out of your mind, woman. You out of your mind. That's what you would say to Meryl Streep. Yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> you out of your mind. I actually, was a makeup artist for eight years. Yeah. I know. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, man. It's like you know. You're not. You're not going to be there at five in the morning for her. No, man. No, no. Fine. I'm, fuck yeah, you. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I'm crazy about it. Fuck She's awesome. Fuck you, <laughs> Mr. Renner. <laughs> you're going to invite me back over. Crazy about me. Uh, 
Uh, okay. So let's wait. Do we have? Do we have two? Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. You great. have that. You have, you have yeah. two two sets. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Now. How do you proceed? Uh. Yeah. Exactly. Um. All right. So here's the thing. You have to imagine that you don't have like a personal driver. That your car's in the shop, and so is your bike, or whatever. For whatever reason, you have to take an Uber pool. Mm-hmm. To a last minute meeting with Steven Spielberg mm-hmm. at Shutters. Okay. Which is all the way to Santa beach. Monica. Yeah. Like a Friday at four o'clock. Right. Do you know about Uber Pool? I've I've heard of it, yes, I'm aware of it. Okay. So let's pretend that this is just your last option. You're in a okay. car with a bunch of randos. You're gonna at first you're the first passenger. Oh wow. Yeah. That's oh. that's gonna okay. Not okay. gonna go so well. Okay, so um, now your driver picks you up. Um, what was your name again? Tosh. No, 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 your name. Oh, my name? Yeah, you're the Uber pool driver. I didn't, no, you told me I wasn't going to be the Uber. Well, right. No, 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 you, you can't read the thing, but you're still our driver. Okay, you can name me. Whatever Hazmat. 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 Hazmat, okay. Hazmat. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I may have had an Uber driver named Hazmat. <laughs> Or my eyesight is going to shit. <laughs> like, what? Isn't a white Hyundai? It has one? I should probably call him first. <laughs> okay, so you, um, you, Hazmat has to make a quick stop in West Hollywood to pick up. Um, oh, it looks like I'm picking up Tosh right now. If you don't mind, I'm picking up Tosh right now. Sure, sure, great. Um,. Tosh gets into the back seat with you. Okay, so this is a little um, thing we'll do here. Okay. Hey, how's Matt, right? Yes, hi, are you, are you Tosh? Yeah, I'm going to Colorado in 2020. Do you want to sit in the front or do you want to sit in the I back with sit, this gentleman? I'll sit in the back. Okay. Wait, wait you're going where? Colorado in 20th. Oh, Colorado in 20th. Oh, I think yeah. you're going to Colorado on the 20th. My <laughs> How much time have we got here? Okay, yeah, so no, yeah, it's, a, it's a, Do you want to sit in the back? It's on the way, yeah. Yeah, I want to sit in the back. It's on the way. Thanks, yeah. Let's do it. I just feel safer. Um, hey, I'm Tosh. How you doing? Good. Okay, this is weird, but um, has anyone ever told you you look like Jeremy Renner? I hear that pretty much every day of my life. You do? Yeah. It's it's just one of those things. That's yeah. weird. I hear it. Are, yeah. are you? I hear it every day of my life. That's crazy. That's so crazy. What are you doing? Are you going to are you going to Santa Monica too? Jack's going to sit on his mommy's lap. Okay? I love you. Can I try on the microphone? This is our microphone. Hey, Anna, you want to introduce our guest here? I love you more. I love you. I love you more than that. Uh, Hey, dear listeners, (laughs) our special guest tonight is Ava. Hello. And Jack. And Hello, Jack. Ava. That's right. And Ava's daddy, Jeremy Brenner. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom. Ba. Hey. Oh, Jack. Hey, why, yes. why don't you tell daddy what you were just doing with Jack? Uh, we were playing cooking. Uh, do you know what? We have cooking class at school. You do? All right, you guys ready to go play again? Go go cook us a, can you go cook us a, let's see, Beef Wellington? That's what I would like. I'm crazy, but you guys are serial killers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, oh literally. Bye, bye, so sweet cute. children. Um, like mini Ted Bundys, these kids. <laughs> <laughs> these sociopaths. They're way too smart. They're going to go up and uh, play. In, Jeremy, in, how old is she? She's uh, three, and a, three and a half. Bye, guys. Love you. Hey, we'll see you guys, we'll see you guys upstairs. <laughs> No, we won't. No. Yeah, totally unsupervised at this point. (laughs) 
Um, hey, everybody. So my uh, guest tonight is Jeremy Renner. Jeremy, thank you so much for being here. I know you're so fucking jet lagged. Yeah. And I'm really sorry because what a fucking pain in the ass this must well, be. Well, I look really good off camera <laughs> and in the dark. And what about this fancy, weird uh, dining room? You Have you seen all the other animals in there? Like, the, I don't know, at some point. I'll on the just... wall? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the creepiness, you know, the continues. Well, no, it's not. It's not even creepy. It's sort of like reassuring. We we're talking really? about those dudes that were between our fences, right? The oh thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like yes, yeah, it's the wrong. Yeah, that's true. That's the wrong fence line to be in. That's so. true. All right, let's just let listeners know that you two are neighbors, next door neighbors. That's right, we are. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you're, but yeah, it would. I. I I would feel sorry for I think the person who. who that, yes, what we're saying. Yeah, it's like not a yeah. When we got kids and a thing, it's like look, yeah. Man. Hey babe. Hey yeah. babe. Yep. I I like to tell my friends that you know if this shit goes down and like the zombies are real and whatnot, come on over. Come to my house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we we yeah. Uh, we got a good setup here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> got some shovels. <laughs> I got, got a full bar. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of canned food. That's right. I can tell monologue after monologue. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, a piano? Yeah. All right. Why nice. do you play? Yeah. Why don't I ever hear you play? I play every night. You do? Yeah. Oh man. Every night. And we also have another musician neighbor who plays. But maybe maybe I'm going deaf. Yeah, maybe. You do have glitter on you. Yeah, I know. It's uh it's uh, the the price of being a a single father with a little child. It looks like I've been in a strip club. I know. That's um, what I was telling you earlier, that any time that Chris has glitter on him, I'm like, what, you know. Yeah, you got a little boy. The body shop. Yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah. Have you noticed how a lot of like strip clubs, they say like live nude? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't mind the, al the alternative of like dead nude. <laughs> like that would be uh i mean if you're into that sort of thing i am <laughs> I'm, I'm into that sort jack of get thing. out of here don't listen to your mother <laughs> um okay so um jeremy uh oh you know what's interesting well there's lots of many interesting things about you but one of the things that i remember in one of our early conversations as we uh, are becoming as we become we became best friends which is what i'd like to call us now mm -hmm. um don't you agree with that <laughs> Yeah, I have a mouthful of food. So. <laughs> um, but uh, that you told me something amazing that sometimes when you act, you can kind of slow your heartbeat down. Do you remember telling me this? Yeah, that's really, well. Because I have yeah. a rabbit heart. And so does Sim. Sim yes. has like eight rabbit hearts it's true. pounding in him. Um, but you can do that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. At some point, will you teach me? Well, it's much more about for me because my, my heart is pretty much like, you know, black coal and it kind of beats once in a while and then it takes on vacation but it, what that's referring to is um uh, kind of energy levels right yeah it's more you catch me in the morning just waking up you're getting one version of me but if i got up in the morning and ran around the block twice you're going to get a very different thing my heart rate's up and it's creating more energy right and some characters um require that that energy or that sort of bpm if you will um, so it's, uh, you know, physically it's, it, that's, a uh, something I do use a lot. But then how do you, cause I, I get easily intimidated. How do you, um, like when I'm in front of the camera and the camera's rolling, I get, you know, like, like gripped with a certain anxiety and, and as I like get involved.